This is one of the uh, pieces of aquamarine that I bought in a preformed lot. It's already been preformed into a round. One of the stones on this lot was not aquamarine. They substituted a topaz to charge aquamarine prices for a topaz stone, but the rest so far have all been aquamarine. So this piece I'll cut into a Portuguese. It's already preformed and it's about uh, about six and a half millimeters, a little over. So if I end up with a six millimeter, that's fine. For, for what we use in the jewelry store, anything above five millimeters is, is very much usable by Bopi to turn into a piece of jewelry. So I'll go ahead and just dop this up and cut a Portuguese cut. Since this gemstone is already preformed into a round design, I will use my favorite round design, a Portuguese design, to cut it. For Portuguese design, I used a design by the late Jeff Graham that he called Simple Portuguese. Simple because he designed it for smaller stones and removed one row of facets, uh, which you don't really need for smaller stones. There are a number of Portuguese gem faceting diagrams out there, and they're all pretty similar, so I don't really recommend any one over any of the others. Try them and pick the best one, the one you like best. For this cut, there's 145 facets to cut and polish. So although it may be called a simple design, it still takes a lot of work to cut and polish a lot of facets. Jeff made hundreds of gem fasting diagrams and there are books available with his designs. Unfortunately, you do have to buy the book to get those designs. And I do have many of Jeff's books and they are great. However, uh, Jeff also put about two dozen of his most popular designs into the public domain for any cutter to use. And I made a video a while back where I show you how to go back in time to Jeff's old website and download Jeff's free designs uh, including this Portuguese design. And if you do go visit Jeff's old website, I recommend that you take a look at all the articles that Jeff wrote on gem cutting. He was a prolific writer, and there are some excellent gem cutting articles there full of valuable advice for cutters. Okay, since this is uh, pretty well preformed, I was going to go straight to my 8,000 zinc, uh, 8,000 grit diamond on a zinc lap. But since there's a little bit of... Uh, work to be done here this isn't quite the girdle's not quite there yet there's a little bit I need to clean up right there and on the other side yeah, that's pretty good so so I will start with my first lap being my uh, 12 m about a 1500 grit lap and uh, work on the girdle and uh, then go to the 8000 grit diamond on a zinc lap and then uh, we'll polish. A viewer recently asked me to show some of the actual cutting of the gemstone. So here goes. The second row of cutting instructions are cut at an angle of 43 degrees. So the first thing I do is set my Ultratech to 43 degrees. Now I set my water to drip at a steady drip uh, onto my 12M lap and I run my lap in this case for this stone at about 600 rpms okay i just cut down the second tier the uh, p3 line of instruction and cut down to just about the girdle with my uh, 12 m lap so now my alter tech is set up and all i need to do is cut this row all the way across the three the nine index, the 15, 21, and so on, all the way around, and then the second tier uh, will be cut to the same, to the same exact location. So I just cut until I hit the 43 right there, and then I stop cutting. And the second row is now finished. I've gone all the way around it. You can see the little points of the second row just touch the top of the girdle all the way around. So now I'll cut the P4 line of instruction 
at a 41 degree angle starting with the 96 tooth and then going around every 16th, the 6, the 12, the 18. And then the, then the final tier or row on the bottom is at 39 degrees. And I go back to the three index, the three index tooth and cut every six, the three, the nine, the 15, all the way around the index gear. And that'll put the next two row, two rows or tiers of facets on the pavilion or the bottom half of our aquamarine. And on the Ultratech, all you do is you set this, uh, you loosen this up, this screw up, and that lets you uh, move the machine down until we hit uh, 41 degrees for an angle. Then when you're about there, you tighten it up. And then this screw right here on the Ultratech, we use that to make the minor adjustments. And we're set at an angle of 41 degrees. So then all we're going to do is put the stone till it just touches our machine at the angle of 41 or just above it. And you can tell when you're there because when you move the mass down, you see the index go up. So we're right there, it's right there is where it's touching your lap. So I raise it just above there and then start the lap going and move the Ultratech down with this tool, turning it. And then I check my cuts until the next little triangle uh, meet point touches the, uh, the P1 meet point. And it didn't take much and we're right there. And you can see the, uh, the little point came down. That's the facet we just cut. And it touch, touches the uh, P1 facet. At, that's a meat point. So now I just go around the uh, Ultratech's all set up. I just need to go around to all the teeth following the instructions, the 96, 6, 12, the uh, P4 line of instruction. So for me, I put a, uh, I just don't cut it off of paper copies anymore. I just uh, put it on my monitor. And uh, so my monitor, I'm just looking at my monitor and uh, go right through the cutting instructions. So I'll cut the uh, P4 line of instructions now. And that's all it takes to cut these facets for this tier. Okay, so I've gone all the way around with this tier and brought this facet down to the meet point about where it touches the P1. So those two points meet. And then now I'll do the final tier, in which case this facet will come down and touch this uh, top of this point. And that'll be all I need to do for the pavilion with the uh, my 12M lap. Then I'll move to the next lap and then to polish. Okay, so I pre-polished our aquamarine with uh, 8,000 grit diamond on a zinc lap, and now I'm going to polish the girdle. So to polish the girdle, I set up my I pull my drip tray down, and I reverse the. Uh, rotation of the lap to counterclockwise so it goes that way and I put a little sponge right in the uh, drip tray kind of stick it in there and that prevents a lot of the water from splashing 
set up the uh, drip to a slow drip. I use about uh, 300, a rotation of about 300 RPMs. And that's about the drip that I use, that kind of a, that's a slow drip. And the good pre-polish makes it very easy to polish. I run my finger over it to make sure that the whole lap is wet. Then I use my spray bottle of cerium oxide and water. Put two uh, sprays on there and we're ready to polish. So at a 90 degree angle, I just lower it until it's just touching. Only takes about uh, three or four passes. And then I check it with my loop and make sure that it's polished. And I move on to the next index. So I start at the 96, and then the 6, the 12, the 18, all the way around every six teeth. Now, if I had gone to polish after using my 12M lap, uh, it would have taken, it would have polished, it would have taken a little bit more work on the uh, serum oxide in my Creamway lap, but I think I could have gone to polish from the 12M. But by going to the uh, 8000 grit diamond on the zinc lap to get a good pre polish, that just makes polishing go that much quicker. And there are other laps you could use to polish. This is Right now, the uh, Creamway and Cerium Oxide is my favorite lap to polish Aquamarine and Barrel, but there are many laps you could use. You don't have to use this particular lap. So once I've gone around all the teeth, then I'll do a good check of the stone, and uh, then I'll move on to the next tier. Okay, let me put my finger to kind of back block some of the backlight so you can see the girdle is polished and now I'll go on to the next uh, the next row and, and polish the rest of the pavilion okay I've polished the number three facet on that second row or second tier again it just took a couple of swipes to polish it. That's that facet right there. You can see the next facet over. Bring it in. And if you look, that facet that's flashing there has a little bit of, uh, it's not quite polished. You can see the little streaks. So that'll be that the difference between the polished facet and the unpolished. And on the other side, same thing, you can see those streaks there. And about four swipes with my uh, Creamway and Cerium Oxide will polish that up. So I'll continue to polish the pavilion of our Aquamarine. Okay, I finished polishing the bottom half of our Aquamarine. So now I will uh, transfer my dops and cut the upper half of the stone. Normally I, I transfer and then kind of leave it in to set whatever adhesive I'm using overnight or whatever, but I've been using uh, ultraviolet light uh, activated uh, super glue. Uh, I guess it's called Surehold by Helios. And so I'm going to transfer using my transfer fixture and right away go cut the upper half. So there's two different bottles packages you can buy of the Helios one the first one I bought has the uh, the flashlight with the ultraviolet flashlight included and the second package I bought did not include the flashlight which is a little cheaper so all I do is put in the uh, put a drop of the super glue 
and then make the connection between the two tops. Move it around a little bit to make sure that there's a that the super glue is on the brass top as well as on the uh, stone. And before I did that, I did clean the stone and the top with my uh, alcohol. So it only takes a few seconds to harden. Turn the ultraviolet light on it. It says it takes about two seconds. And I can tell by touching it that it's already it's already uh, hardened up. So, like I said, I normally wait. I have enough other projects to cut that I could cut something else and then come back to this. But in this case, I'm going to go ahead right now and uh, continue to cut on the soft marine. For one reason, I just want to see if it's true that this is a instant, instantly cured and ready to go. So I'm going to test that out. So in the case of the uh, the upper half or the crown of my aquamarine I went directly to polish from the 12 amp just to see if I could and I did, had no problem polishing up. It took a little longer than if I would have gone to a 8,000 grit diamond on a zinc lap and then to polish but uh, polished up a little bit a little bit slower but did polish up fine with the creamway and cerium oxide. So now I'll set up to cut the table and then we'll be done with this uh, aquamarine. Okay, the table polished right up. So now I will uh, soak our stone in acetone and then weigh it, measure it, and uh, send it off to Gopi. In this video, I continued working my way through a small lot or parcel of preformed aquamarine from Nigeria. This particular piece was already preformed into about a 6.5, 6.6 millimeter round shape, and I didn't lose much in turning it into a 6.06 .06 millimeter Portuguese cut. I did have a viewer request that I show more of the actual cutting of the gemstone, so give me some feedback and please let me know in the comments if you like. Uh, me showing more of the actual cutting or not. The Portuguese cut is not a difficult cut and I believe any cutter could cut this design but it does take a while longer because of all the facets you need to cut and polish and make sure they meet. But I do like this design much better than the standard round brilliant but that's just my preference. Also tested out, continued testing out my uh, UV light activated super glue and in this case I immediately started cutting the crown or upper half of the stone after transferring from the bottom half. And the super glue was, was cured and I had no issues in cutting the upper half of the stone. So uh, the UV light does instantly cure that uh, super glue. So please let me know in the comments what you think of this piece of aquamarine and uh, the Portuguese design. And as always, happy fasting everyone.